Ubigo Airtech, an air design team from Odense, Spain, that is made up of a total of 27 members from the aerospace engineering, computer engineering, and even business administration law degrees. All of them are located at the University of Vigo and belong to the campus of the city of Ourense. Uvigo Airtech is divided into five different departments in order to cover all needs of the project in an organized way. Structural Design Department. They are in charge of designing and simulating the internal structure of the model aircraft, as well as the management of the manufacturing process. Aerodynamics Department. They are responsible for designing the aerodynamic elements of the model, ensuring that the aircraft is capable of lifting the payload. Propulsion and Dynamics Department. This department assesses the electromechanical design and analysis of the given electric motor and propeller pair, and also designed, simulated, and tested the main motor structural mount, as well as the main and rear landing gears. Electronics Department. This department is in charge of designing, maintaining, and implementing the circuits of the model aircraft. Organization and Marketing Department. The members of this department are the ones who organize the team and manage this image. The external surfaces of our drone are made of pre-prick carbon fiber. In this way, our team has been able to learn one of the most used manufacturing processes in the aeronautical industry. In relation to the materials, it has been decided that the molds used will be made of aluminum, due to its density, availability and the advantages it presents at the time of manufacturing in terms of surface finishing and mold treatment needs. When designing the internal structure of the wing, it was decided that in the first half of the semi-wing there should be two beams to provide rigidity and stability. These beams go through the middle of each wing and the fuselage. In the central part, a piece printed in PLA has been placed to transmit the loads of the trailing edge beam to the beams that lift the fuselage. Later, we decided on the number and arrangement of the ribs and ended up choosing a configuration of 8 ribs. The internal aluminum structure and the carbon fiber are glued using reinforces of fiberglass and epoxy resin. This will be the same in our wings. The skin of the control surfaces is combined with a solid PVC low density foam core. That needs to be as light as possible, since it will not be under much structural stress. The empennage is divided into two semi stabilizers and an outrotter. To manufacture them, we use four molds in which we laminate the intrados and the extrados of each semi stabilizer. Finally, we cut the surfaces of the outrotter and glue them to a core foam, so the internal structure is the same as the ailerons and flaps. The aerodynamics department started collecting data of similar planes in order to have some numbers to start our calculations. Then, we defined the main parameters of the plane, which will be used by the rest of the team for their own design. Having the knowledge of making an elliptical wing, we went all in and made our empennage also elliptical. Given the competition's box requirements, we made it in V-tail form. This way, we can make it big enough to not reduce our wingspan. When everything was settled, it was time to cut those wings for making the control surfaces. Given the mass of the plane, if we wanted to achieve that 40 meter takeoff, we needed some flaps. They ended up being too big, but they worked great, and we could use them as spoilers at the landing. Our last step was designing a more aerodynamic shape for the cargo container and, of course, making sure our calculations made a plane that could be easily flown. In regards to the analytical calculations, most of the critical components like the motor and propeller are mandatory and specified by the ACC regulations. They need to be completely understood and spreadsheets of performance values need to be calculated in order to select the right components. The motor mount design was totally made in the department and its two main purposes are 1. The obvious, to transfer the thrust to the rest of the structure and 2. A more technical one to protect the expensive motor in case of a nose hard landing or a complete crash. To achieve that second goal, the structure of the mount was designed with a low safety coefficient, enough to endure bursts of higher thrust but easily breakable on impact, which is reinforced by the use of PLA, as it is a fragile material. 
The fracture and breaking pattern was analyzed to break inwards, inserting the motor in the fuselage instead of exposing it to further impacts. The undercarriage design was also made by the department after a miracle testing of stability and ground clearance needs. We finally settled on a tail dragger configuration made of two parts, an aluminum main landing gear and a TPU 3D printed tail landing gear. The tail landing gear was a bit of a struggle and our first design, which were also made in aluminum, didn't provide the stability needed for the takeoff run, and they even made us abort some takeoffs. So we decided to experiment on rapid prototyping using 3D printing of TPU, a flexible material, which gave us extremely good results that allow us to rapidly manufacture our own tail gears instead of waiting for external sources to make them for us. The electronics department started defining some design requirements. First of all, we needed components with a great potential and performance, but with the lowest weight possible. One very important point is servo choice. The chosen servos are light and small and with enough torque for adequately moving the surfaces. We also prepared a custom OpenTX program that allows us a correct control of the surfaces. Related to the aileron mechanism, the aileron was placed at the outer side of the wing. Its drive mechanism was designed with an external actuator due to space constraint that reduced movement range, but the server has to be placed inside the wing to reduce the aerodynamic impact. The flap mechanism is more complex than the aileron or stabilizer one due to the rotational axis position. We have to achieve a mechanism that places the rotation axis out of the wing. To do that, we designed two parts, one fixed to the flap surface and another one fixed to the wing. Related to the VTL mechanism, we place the surface at the fuselage to add minimal weight reward, and through a long traction bar we can bring movement to the infinite surfaces. <laughs> 